Valérie Giscard d'Estaing, the former president and grand old man of French politics, has died aged 94. He was one of the youngest occupants of the Elysee Palace, having unexpectedly become president in 1974. During his tenure, he liberalised social attitudes to abortion, contraception and divorce. He was also a key architect of integration of what would then become the European Union. He was also criticised, though, for economic woes and a controversial policy in Africa. Well, Michael Daventry takes a look back for us at his life and his career. Valérie Giscard d'Estaing once described himself as a conservative who likes change. The centre-right leader became French president in 1974 after a very close election. At 48, he was then the third youngest president in French history. His desire was introducing reforms and to modernise society, and he moved quickly. One of his first acts was to reduce the voting age from 21 to 18. Then his health minister, Simone Veil, championed a 1975 law that legalised abortion. Veil, who as an Auschwitz survivor, was asked during the heated debates before the law was passed whether she wanted to send children to the ovens. Giscard d'Estaing was also a fervent believer in the European idea. He worked closely with German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt to set up the European Council and to increase the powers of the European Parliament. He also played a key role in creating the European monetary system. Then came scandal. In 1979, a French satirical newspaper unveiled the so-called Diamond Affair, revealing that during his time as finance minister in 1973, Giscard d'Estaing was offered diamonds by Jean Baudel Bocassa, the man who'd go on to declare himself emperor of the Central African Republic. It tarnished Giscard d'Estaing's image, and then there was also the economy. France was hit hard by the oil crises in 1973 and 1979, and unemployment was on the rise. In 1981, he lost his re-election bid to the socialist François Mitterrand. But his political career was not over. Giscard d'Estaing made a comeback in 2001 when he was appointed to lead work on a constitution for an enlarged EU. It took 16 months, and when he finished, he thanked his mascot. It's my tortoise. It was a symbol. He believed that by advancing slowly and carefully, you could reach your goal. In the spring of 2005, he worked tirelessly to explain the new constitution ahead of a referendum in France. Ultimately, the no vote won out, followed a few days later by the same result in the Netherlands. Giscard d'Estaing took it as a vote against the ruling governments of the day and not against the project of the constitution. Still, it was a huge disappointment for him. He was not only a politician, he was also described as a womanizer. He was an author too, and in 2004 became a member of the Académie Française, and at this occasion declared that he also wanted to be remembered as a writer. I would certainly like that in the image that we left, in one way or another, what I have written or expressed is a relatively important part. Well, joining us now is Bruno Bonnell, member of the French National Assembly with the La Republique en Marche party. Joining us now from Lyon, really appreciate your time. Look, uh, Giscard d'Estaing, what are his lasting contributions to France, its politics, its culture and identity today? You know, if I remember Giscard d'Estaing, I was like 16 when he came, became president. And it was a, a, a revolution because for the first time, a president coming from science education versus literacy or war, uh, as before, um, decided to modernize France. So we could list, you know, the, the social uh, aspect of his mandate. But uh, more importantly, he transformed France and, and he opened wide the gates for Europe. That's really what we can remember about Giscard d'Estaing. How much, then, do you think he had an influence on France and then the European project as a whole? Well, you know, he was clearly uh, an advocate for a, a new Europe. He, he got this vision that the blocs in the future, as we see today, uh, would be continental. Um, the U.S. being really heavy, but China as well. So, so he was thinking that um, the size of a country or a region were definitely too small to fight in the future world. So, unfortunately, uh, he was probably like a surfer before the wave. 
the wave went and he stayed, uh, you know, watching it and, and, and he didn't convince the people to vote for this new constitution. But, you know, I think he planted uh, a, a little seed that uh, go on growing and hopefully will flourish one day. How do you think the population of the country will remember him? What will his legacy be? You know, uh, it was very controversial at that time uh, because, uh, unfortunately, it took like the 73 and 79 energy crisis and people didn't really understand because on the short term, uh, France discovered under his mandate debt and unemployment. So it was a big frustration. But in the long term, he became like a wise man. And the fact that he lasted for so long uh, makes it one of the uh, important um, historical uh, character of the French recent history. Bruno Bonnell, thank you very much for speaking to us. Member of the French National Assembly with the La Republique en Marche movement.